So, what's up everyone? Thanks again for tuning in on the Wheeler Detailers YouTube channel. My name is Martin, I love eating bananas, and my buddy Jordi is behind the camera. So this is not a detailing video related on instructions. This is a video on actually how to make an advertising video. So um, one of our buddies, Jasper, he's doing a lot of online marketing for us and advertising for us and also throwing a lot of things Jordi and me make uh, away because he can use it because it's not, uh, yeah, not actually meant for camera work, but hey, this is how we are. Um, and today we're doing some wash, some wheels, uh, some riding videos with my beloved M3 here in the back that I got from Canada and completely fixed it up a couple of years ago. And I'm super proud of that as well. And yeah, along the way, Jordi and me will have some conversations that uh, might make sense, might not make sense, but probably be very funny as well. So uh, yeah, we'll keep it uncutted. So this video is actually meant for Jasper. So this is what we all do for you and everybody in the world can now enjoy it. So, see you guys and girls in the next shot. So here we see my favorite washing arsenal. Two transparent buckets, having a mid slide in each bucket, chanilla wash mitt, wheel wedge with the mesh side for it for the insects and the bugs uh, on the front end of the car, a very soft detailing brush to reach hard to reach areas, Decon ceramic wash for a mild wash with very good hydrophobic properties. A clay mat, light if I need so, I always have it on hand in my bucket body. APC as well for the grill elements and stuff, the lamelles. And a little bit of gold brush, a little bit of harder brush than this one is, for, for example, for the lug nuts. And I've got a wheel brush here, the G09 wheel brush for the front end of the wheels. Of course, my uh, snobby spray gun here teamed up with the green MTM nozzle. So, I already did some warm water in this bucket and I'm gonna dilute, because it's a 19 liter bucket, I'm gonna dilute four capfuls of Decon ceramic wash in it. There we go. And uh, yeah, let's foam it up with my snobby spray gun. Sheeting video one. This is actually a horizontal surface, huh? Look at it, look at this. Sheeting video number two. Quite impressive. Sheeting video number three. So let me put my MTM nozzle there in the bucket body, connect my foam lens. I've got some body wash and wax in it. 90 milliliters of shampoo, 900 milliliters of lukewarm water. Valve on top is closed and a pressure washer of minimum 120 bars. Here we go. It fixed no foam today. So, always start with snow foam to release online dust and dirt. Let's rinse it off. With uh, adding on that uh, cold water from the pressure washer, Decon Ceramic Wash Solution, you will add hydrophobicity just while washing. So it's perfectly mixed. If you over dilute it, it can streak. So therefore we say always three drops on a small bucket, which is let's say three and a half gallons, so 13.5 liters. And if you got uh, four or four and a half gallons, like in this case, we always uh, 
do fog cap fulls, which is around 50 ml. So you don't get any streaks. With some other ceramic shampoos, you might get some uh, streaks. But if you dilute Decon Ceramic Wash right, it will always be streak free and with that a little bit more user friendly. But like I also mentioned in, the, in another video, the key of successful using Decon Ceramic Wash is in the dilution. So this shampoo is perfectly suited uh, if you're going to do a mild wash for a week from your home to your work, do some groceries and stuff. This is perfect because the car is not super dirty often. And uh, yeah, we always advise to a pre-wash first, to use a snow foam first and then do the decon ceramic wash. So you uh, clean the most stubborn particles with the snow foam and then you uh, cleans the details and uh, add that uh, ceramic protection let the silk sounds work with the decon ceramic wash and of course rinse out your wash mat after so here we go On the other part of the roof, you can already see the water, the hydrophobicity there, which is only washing emulsion yet. This is how extremely this will beat off. We will insert some uh, videos on that uh, after washing. Actually, I'm wearing a shine coning t-shirt today. We uh, made it uh, for the Turkstar show where we were, uh, I don't know, end of July, beginning of August in Assen on the racetrack. It was a beautiful weekend. We had so much, met so much cool people, having nice conversations. Pushed out the decon name, made people happy. And uh, yeah, we did it together with uh, Tessa and uh, Stefan from uh, Shine Koning. I actually think Tessa should be called Shine Queen, Shine Koning in. So um, yeah, we're really uh, thankful for their support. And uh, Stefan from Shine Koning gives also a lot of uh, feedback on testing the decon emulsions where these were not ready for production yet. He didn't have to do it, but he did. So he also wanted to spend some time with us. Also based on his uh, feedback, we got some improvements on application, on uh, finishing to make your experience with decon products even better. So big shout out to uh, Stefan and Tessa for that. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm wearing this yellow shirt with pride. So let's go to the front end of the car and then uh, rinse it down. The solid content of the silk sounds are quite high in the product. And if you use too much uh, soapy ingredients, then uh, you will break down the effect that the silicons can give. Cool. Rinse it off. Rinse it. Rinse so Jordi, I think in one and a half weeks, it's actually D-Day, it's Decon Day. I'm super excited. Me too. Seeing a lot of people again that we haven't seen in a long time. People that uh, did the SDU courses here. Distributors. Mooi. <laughs> <laughs> This is me on a Saturday night. Peeing in the air. <laughs> <laughs> cool, let me get my drying towel. After many testing, also compared with the still very good Decon microfiber drying towels, I can only say there is one winner. And that's the purple extreme drying towel from Shiny Garage. I think it's the best one we've got. We tested so many, but they've got it nailed uh, with this one. It's not too thick, 
not too thin. So you got an excellent feel with the surface uh, below. I think I already dry, dried pretty much half the car and I'm still getting absorbency from it. Let's decon, we uh, offer some more very cool brands with quality products, but sometimes a little bit with a different identity. Shiny Garage is one of them. And uh, what they bring out, like the Shiny Garage Icy Swimmer Quick Detailer, their monster wheel cleaner, it's actually very good. We've got a very warm heart for the Shiny Garage products and the company. So I pretty much did two thirds of my car and I still have absorbency. So for this uh, advertising video from Jasper, we did the snow foam, we did the ceramic wash and we did the drying. So let's uh, give these CSL wheels some love with some good old wheel and rim racks. Let's go. And dried wheels are clean. It's time for some protection. Oh, yeah. Without the applicator in my mouth, it says open the jar. Apply some rim racks thinly on your applicator. Spread it out over the surface. It gives some polymer, some slash Teflon protection to the surface where you add it on. Now, and with these polymers, brakes that produce a lot of brake, stuff, brake dust, like this BMW does, then the brake dust will lay on the layer of polymer. Protection, it also will add tons of shine. So, let's have it cured for around 15 minutes and then buff it off with a short piled microfiber workhorse towel. So, let me get my great workhorse microfiber towel and see if the swipe test is already done, if it's dried or not. So let me see if it's dry or not. Yes, it is. So that means that the wheel and rim racks is cured properly. And it's time to uh, buff off the excess material. And look at that shine. And I can already feel under the fibers of my towel. It's super slick. A few moments later. So let's uh, turn down the radio because uh, all M drivers know why. To give you some background information, I think I uh, found this car over the internet together with uh, Thomas Linders, LCC minus BV.nl in Helmond, Holland. Actually, uh, Thomas lives in the same town as Ima Hansi. That hasn't had to do anything with the car, but it's cool. My wish was a manual V8. And the car is really good. I also would recommend him if you... Uh, like he searches cars for you. You say, hey, I want a black car with a red interior. That's really <laughs> way. And uh, that kind of wheels. Then he will search pretty much uh, Europe or further for you to find your car. And he arranges all the transport, the imports, the registration and uh, everything so that's really uh, really a good service and the car really grow on me in the last couple of years I did some modifications on that uh, started with painting the extra set of wheels first I did it gold but it was the wrong color gold and uh, which a lot of people like but I thought it was a little bit too yellow and now uh, it's been painted uh, black on the outside and cherry red on the inside, the wheels then. And uh, of course I did all the servicing, all the technical work uh, over Lareman and in Ham. It's also a uh, BMW specialist garage with a deep, deep, deep love for all them cars. Father and son. Yeah. yeah. And um, I did upgrade there with the carbon air intake from Eventuri and also not only that but also the whole air filter that comes from that 
and when everything is open and I put here the end button you can see here the end button so I've got it set it up that everything is in the most sporty setting then it sounds like this 8000 baby and the car is actually 12 years old and it feels so fresh it's it's like it was produced yesterday I actually think I've driven more and more cars from let's say from the early 2000s 2005 2010 and in Germany back then I think then quality was written in capitals the cars are so insanely good built together engines are engineered to the max in those days everything could like you know who would have thought that in a size of a medium car like a free service as you drop in a V8 same did Mercedes and they dropped in a V8 the 6.2 liter engine and they call it a 6.3 so it was really cool Audi RS4 as well it's, it's, it's been uh, those, those days will never come back anymore and, uh, yeah cars like this uh, keep you remember those Top Gear series on a Sunday evening yeah it's it's partly of course uh, well, it's, not, it's a small part ratio and it's a large part emotion but uh, yeah makes you happy so I did that and I did the exhaust from uh, EPS exhaust power supply in uh, let me think uh, Hoogsand in Holland in the north in the Groningen province and the guy that works there is, his name is Hans it's just a, it's a beautiful human being I cannot say differently so uh, he already did Chris's Porsche and a long time ago he did a Camaro for us so you call him up and say hey I'm thinking about uh, this or that exhaust and then he asks you what do you think of that uh, I read some good reviews on the internet and uh, yeah I think I like that for the car I think we can build a better one then he says how can you actually build a better one well, we can because we do that for years and sometimes with all these uh, aftermarket exhausts then uh, sometimes the fittings aren't right because over the years i don't know it works a little bit from millimeter to millimeter and now we can build it perfectly that fits to the car in the state that you're now in well i thought that makes sense and then he asks you do you want a loud exhaust a louder exhaust or do you want a jet Completely uh, in the heat of the moment, I ordered the jet, and it pretty much works like a jet. And uh, not so long ago, I was uh, always almost at my uh, house, and for some reason, the police crossed the street. I don't actually why. I was just driving normally, but the exhaust was open, and the windows were open. So a police officer walked up on me, and he said. Uh, that sounds phenomenal and I said I know he said uh, can you rev it for me sure and then he gave me the ghetto fist and uh, that sounds great I love it and I love police officers like that it's it's amazing you know he didn't give me a fine because it was too loud he just enjoys old cars like we all do and it's uh, thank you very much for that you're my hero so now uh, we're going uh, to a location uh, where uh, Yoni will be filming uh, the last uh, shot gonna be a drive-by or uh, with uh, respect to Hans from uh, EPS it's gonna be a flyby this is actually part of my weekly skill around here when I inline, because if I don't do that, I get too fat. And uh, often Sunday mornings, let's say between 8 and 9, 9.30, you can find me here on a 25, 30 kilometer stretch. Oh, it sounds good, eh? Eargasm. Yeah, I do that in, let's say, one and a half to two hours. Stay a little bit in shape, do some sports, enjoy the scenery and the environment. 
could also not think of living anywhere else. Well, I can, but I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, this is like heel Twente. Anita! Anita, I'm Ooh, is that an old classic Volvo in front of me? A lot of people think they're ugly, but I think it has something. It's an old 245. When I was a kid, and you had to make a drawing in school of a car. This is pretty much the boxy kind of designs that I made. And they're just so timeless. I think this is an original Dutch delivered one from 1992. So that's now 31 years old. And still going. That's what I meant with all cars. It's the, the way it's built. It's, in those days it was built to last forever. I cannot overtake here. There's a guy there with a trailer with a horse. Or his wife. Or my uh, sister-in-law. Yeah, she could be. <laughs> Kim, hello. <laughs> How much horsepower does that car have? This one? No, oh, just one with the extra horse. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like plus one. Yeah, plus one. I don't know actually what it is in front of there. I think it's a Mercedes. Actually, if you guys like these, uh, yeah, it's a Mercedes. Yeah, if you like these uh, videos that Jordi and me go on tour. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments, uh, because we've got some tour coming up soon. Where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah, where are we going? Where? Oh, Las Vegas, yes. Oh, Las Vegas. <laughs> wow. Meeting our lots of old detailing friends again, I think last time I was there before Covid. So I was there probably in 2018 for the last time. Back then wearing uh, CG shirts. And uh, yeah, as you know, uh, those days are over. And uh, we've got some information from uh, many locations in the world that people search for alternatives. And uh, yeah, you and me go there to spread some love, share some uh, good times with each other, and go to the international detailer meet and greet. A few moments later. So uh, now we see the cameraman, aka wingman, aka graphic designer. So uh, this is uh, Jordi. Hello. So uh, Jordi, what's your goal in life? My goal was having fun. Which that's this one. Well, having fun. Top uh, priority. Yeah. How does that work? So wake up, going to work, make some fun with your colleagues, and go to home. Uh, dinner is ready, my mom, and then go oh. to playing some volleyball with friends drinking some beers and the next day exactly the same. Sounds like, sounds like, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, sounds really yeah. good. So Jordi, um, uh, to give you an introduction, uh, so how old are you? I'm 29. 29 years old. So yes. Jordi is actually also a volleyball trainer of my daughter. Or was for my yeah. daughter, yeah. sort of. And he's really good at that as well. Very uh, fanatic uh, in the volleyball game. I am. And, uh, He's been with us now for five years, started as an assistant, as a graphic designer. Uh, but uh, over the years, he already grew a lot in his role. And then uh, since uh, the choice was being made to uh, end the cooperation uh, with CG, yadi has been uh, working uh, full throttle on uh, Decon. And this is actually uh, the mind that produces all the Decon labels for the bottles and the cans and uh, pretty much everything that you will see on merchandise later as well. Can you imagine that? It's all from here. It's all from there. Huh. I'm actually, I, I, I don't know what to say. Yes, thanks. Uh, uh, with capitals. Um, where do you get your inspiration? So, I don't know. Just pick a product. I don't know. The, the orange cleaner and the greaser. Uh, uh, first thing I thought about orange the greaser was yeah, you have like a yeah, free grease and it's mostly on metal. So we made the label like a metal kind of yeah mirror oh, yeah, yeah. material with an engine and ta-da. Yeah, it's not only that. It doesn't have to be uh, so difficult, less is more I always see. It's uh if I look at the design I, I couldn't think of it and um, it'll be zoom available. Um, 
Let us know in the comments how you like that. To a little bit go on on that, so how do you choose, let's say, the colors or the letter types you're using or how large or where does it all come from? Making one template in the beginning, like three days to make everything like perfect. And if everything is perfect, you can, yeah, um, with every new label design, use that agreement that you make with yourself, always do the same thing and then it's all going to be one good line of products and yeah. Cool. We got so much compliments already from uh, yeah the first couple of customers and everybody that knew like Stefan, Sean Koning, uh, Bastian, Patrick, and a lot of people that tested uh, with us. And then Yodi made some mock-ups and everybody's like, wow, where does he get it from? Yeah, the labels pops out. But some labels is like one day, some labels is like three, four days. And, uh, and sometimes you have a really good idea and just popped out in like an hour. <laughs> like Street Free is like a very simple label, but very nice. Yeah. It, it, it takes me like in the end with all the CLP and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you are busy, but with the only design, it, it takes me like a half hour design. Yeah. Make a mock up. Yeah, yeah. And make everything ready just so they print it properly. So that takes a lot of time and it has to be good in one time if you fucked up then <laughs> then the, the, the other labels are yeah not good to see everything ready on the 23rd of september everything on the shelves with the lights on it uh, that will be the the complete moment yeah yeah so uh, yeah that looks really nice really cool yeah and he really worked countless hours on that so um beautiful so uh, a little bit different uh, topic. We sometimes get special visitors in the shop. What's your, uh, what's the visitor you will never forget? <laughs> I know a lot. I, can't. <laughs> I don't have fingers enough. <laughs> so you can only just Even with the fingers of three fingers, yours I have enough. <laughs> <laughs> like that <we> <laughs> I remember that story, it's a, it's a while ago, that uh, a guy came, an adult guy came with his mom to the shop and he asked you about a microfiber applicator. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed one of the applicators and he, told, he asked me, does this applicator smell yeah, of something? And I thought, what, what is this? <laughs> so, no, he was going to, yeah, he yeah, pushed this <laughs> applicator in his nose. <laughs> oh, I don't smell anything. Oh, damn. <laughs> and then he purchased an airbrush yeah. with the applicator, sprayed it on the applicator. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't actually know where these people come from. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> he gave me a really good tip about air freshness. It was his ID. It was like an Avenger. Um, he, he told me, you have to do the, the new car smell and the uh, strawberry uh, air freshener <laughs> all together awesome awesome it's my idea my idea and i thought okay you are <laughs> yeah. and also for some reason uh, <laughs> you you attract these kind of people because i was also me. yeah I, I was with a customer <laughs> and uh, i i was going to make an account for him so he can purchase it on his business account yeah so i asked him what's your name <laughs> he told me the so I thought, B, and he asked me, should I spell it for you? I said, okay, you can spell it. So he did, said, B. <laughs> so he put in B as <laughs> name in the account. <laughs> Maybe it was uh, from the A e team. Uh, yeah, that's BA. BA, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My God, eh? Yeah, so a lot of uh, adventurous things uh, happen always um, in the shop and in the office. <laughs> and in the warehouse too. Yeah. yeah, so that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, time to conclude this video. It's a little bit of spontaneous video because uh, Jasper uh, needs some uh, material for his uh, advertising campaign. So you probably see uh, a couple of these uh, washing shots and driving shots come by on the socials. Combine it to give you a little bit uh, more uh, impression about uh, Jordi. Uh, he's always, uh, his thumb is always there, but uh, there is more to that. Yeah, let's make some more together videos, especially since the Vegas trip is coming. Yeah, I think that's cool.
help also that uh, you guys that are viewing think this is cool. I hope Jasper thinks this is cool. So now we're gonna end this video because uh, yeah, we just decided we're gonna go to the ice cream shop, get some ice cream for the whole team. So that's super important. So we have to end the video now. Bye bye. Bye.